a second here. I have to make sure this site is actually okay. Um, so as I've said, forum for dismembering Smurfs. Or actually, it's just a forum for Smurfs, from what I can tell. It's just a Smurf forum. You wouldn't think that I would need to do heavy vetting for a Smurf forum, would you? You know? You see this. You see Smurf BBS, Smurfs DVDs. Green Papa Smurf, who is he? Smurfette, we can send a Smurf greeting card. And you think that's all fine, right? You think it's all good. So why would I need to do heavy vetting, extreme vetting on a Smurf page? Why would this be needed? Hmm, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, let's see. Well, it seems to be fine. I mean, visibly, I don't know. Hello all. I recently felt inspired to create more Smurf pictures. I've been rather fascinated by the idea of somehow meeting a Smurf, particularly a baby Smurf. So I made a story about what I'd probably do. For the bathtub scene, I relied on the episode Jokey's Funny Bone for pictorial reference. But the rest of it is pretty much freehand. So, you know, just gonna get me a baby Smurf. Just, just gonna have one. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Live specimen, do not drop. I came home to a single package waiting on my doorstep. A small wooden box with ventilation holes in one side and a live specimen label. The box had been addressed to a research lab down the road, but had no return address. Normally, I would have left the box to be re-delivered to the proper place, but I heard a faint noise emanating from it. It sounded like crying. Imagine, imagine my surprise when I opened the small crate. Inside the cramped confines on a coarse bed of wool shavings lay a baby smurf. The poor creature looked up at me, trembling with fear and bewilderment, a tiny, a single tiny cheer rolling down his cheek. I wanted to reassure the dear tiny blue infant that I wasn't going to hurt him. I had never seen a smurf before, and I tried to recall anything I had read about them, partic particularly about baby smurfs on the bluebuddies.com website. I looked down at him and touched his tail. What a soft, squishy little tail it was. I couldn't resist poking it. The Smurf baby initially flinched, but then a sm shy smile crept across his little blue face. He was enjoying my affection. Gazing at his adorable tiny face, I decided to give the baby Smurf's bulbous little nose a playful tweak. The baby Smurf giggled and began to wiggle his tail with glee. I continued to play with his little no nose. Relieved that I had been able to bring the Lilliputian infant to a sense of ease so quickly. Hmm. Well, we got we got little Smurf boy in a in a bathtub. Mm-hmm. I'd wanted to wash baby Smurf's hat along with his pajamas, but when I plucked it off his head, he let out a startled yelp. Immediately covering his bald blue little scalp as best he could with his miniature hands, he began to whimper and sob piteously. He looked pleadingly up at me and uh, at the little white smurf hat that I held in my hand. I promptly placed it back on his head and he sighed with relief. I found an old but clean sock and nudged the baby smurf until he backed inside. It fit him nicely as a sleeping bag. I placed a pin cushion under his head. Aw, oh, it's so cute, isn't it? Interesting story and animation. Uh, with this story, I could justify keeping and taking care of the baby Smurf since there was no way to find out where he came from, and I certainly wasn't going to deliver him to the lab, especially when there's a professional Smurf nursery run by caring humans that could advise me. Right, okay. This is so sweet. Uh, I liked your story, Smurf in hand. It's really cute. Oh, uh, what a cute story. Yeah, it's really cute. Really cute. The story of my rescued baby Smurf continues. This depiction is probably the closest I'll ever get to actually holding a real baby Smurf. Eventually, I'd like to actually make a gif of the baby Smurf hiding in and then shyly poking his head out of the sock I had him sleeping in. Very specific, almost fetish-like, uh descriptions of these things, wouldn't you say? 
very specific. Very expensive. Now, after I got off the phone with the Blue Moon Nursery, I saw that the baby Smurf had awakened and was hiding in the sock which I had given him to sleep in. Right. Uh, the, the baby Smurf squealed with delight. It just has to be a baby Smurf, doesn't it? It can't just be a nor- You know, normal Smurfs are pretty tiny on their own. I don't know if this needs to be a baby Smurf. Don't know if you need to make it that weird, bro. Uh, but, you know, he had to set an appointment for the nursery for tomorrow. But for now, I had a shopping list to follow, as the nursery staff suggested. Uh, yeah, we got Smurf berry juice. Oh, baby's gone naked. Oh, it's just so cute. It's just so super cute, everybody. Just so cute. This is from 2008, by the way. Maybe this is before we invented internet degeneracy. I don't know. Uh, right, so... Oh, fucking hell. The very next morning, I carefully dressed the baby Smurf in his clean little Smurf pajamas. His constant squirming and my fear of inadvertently harming his delicate body made the task rather challenging. I donned my jacket and then plopped the tiny blue infant into one of the spacious pockets. Right, okay, so when, when does this... <laughs> Uh, soft knob of a tail. Oh no, what is this? A stern looking nurse? Oh, it's a baby Smurf medical exam. Uh, stern looking nurse passed by a, a window. Make sure to not, not to vaccinate your Smurfs. Make that rational, irrational decision. Uh, I wasn't even in the room as she went about the exam when she produced a tiny little glass. Uh, uh, okay, right. Uh huh. Now baby is truly naky. Thank you, Vic George. Thank you for letting us know. Oh, this is good. Oh, this is perfectly wholesome, everybody. Yet another naky baby Smurf picture for you, Vic. Winky Smurf face. Right, so he's playing games with the Smurf. This will be the last part of the story. Ah, this would make an adorable storybook. It's gonna be so good, everybody. Let's jump to page two here. Let's keep reading. Baby's bare bottom. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Getting some vibes off of this one. I don't know. Starting to feel like this Smurf community might be fucking a bunch of fucking sickos. I don't know. And not the good kind of sickos like like the sicko army that you're all part of watching the stream, but the, the bad kind of sickos. Uh, one day Blueberry, my adopted baby Smurf, was playing outside in a new set of Smurf hat and pajamas I had bought him. While he was climbing on a toy mushroom I had made from Sculpey, suddenly one of the pajama buttons popped off. The tiny creature stared around in bewilderment, feeling exposed below his soft, round little tail, but not quite able to figure out why, let alone why I was laughing out loud. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Now it's time for a very sentimental chapter. Okay. Watching the once in a blue moon episode. Can you can you picture being this this big of a fan of Smurfs, everybody? Can you just like no, okay. Um Blueberry's first miracle. Uh another another little baby Smurf, huh? Dewdrop, okay. Dewdrop was rescued in a raid on a warehouse used by exotic pet smugglers. She had been found in a pile of filthy paint-soaked rags. She had bruises all over her tiny body, limbs, and even her tail, as if someone had been deliberately pinching her delicate blue skin. During her captivity in lieu of smurf berries, Someone attempted to feed the poor little creature a salty cashew, nearly choking her. It took three weeks before Dewdrop wouldn't scream in terror at the sight of a human face upon waking up from a nap, though she was now trusting to her adoptive human mother 
Lonely Dewdrop. Never, mother? This is a woman? No, I'm sorry. This can't be a woman. There's no... People don't... Eat, women don't get this crazy. No. Uh, it took three weeks, right? Apparently there were bruises on the inside that had never healed. Yeah, you know. Happy, friendly, smurf fucking story, right? As the lady finished her story, Blueberry woke up and started squeaking and waving his tiny outstretched arms in the other baby's direction. Yeah, they just have to be babies, right? It just has to be a baby with little bruises all over its body. It just has to be you describing a, a little baby nearly choking to death and uh, having bruised tail and having bruises on the inside. It just has to be a baby, doesn't it? It just wouldn't be right if it wasn't a baby. As the lady finished her story, Blueberry woke up, blah blah blah, we read this, uh, tiny feet under the blanket. Ah, uh, there they are. Isn't it just so cute, everybody? Isn't this just such a cute, heartwarming story that's definitely not got any weird overtones? Hmm. Lovely chapter, Smurf in hand. Yeah. It's just so lovely. Just so lovely. Okay. Oh god, here we go. Here we go, everybody. You fucking engage. We're getting we're getting there. It's happening. This chapter would take place just before the Blueberry's first miracle one. The raid. The day that Dewdrop, the baby Smurf, had been rescued is recounted in the journal of one of the customs agents who broke into the smuggler's warehouse. You know, I never watched Smurfs. Was there a big uh, smuggler side plot? Was there like a gunfight between a bunch of humans fighting for control over the, the Smurfs? Uh, I don't... Don't, don't know about that one. Uh, upon gaining access to the warehouse, it became readily apparent that the smugglers were forewarned and had likely abandoned this base of operations in the middle of the night. There were various partially empty bags of animal feed piled in one corner as well as a couple of empty cages. A metal desk drawer opened to reveal an empty ampule of animal tranquilizer. We were going to tape the area off for later inspection when a faint noise drew my attention. Inside a waste basket lying on top of a pile of dirty rags was what appeared to be a tiny blue humanoid creature's head. I thought back to a recent training seminar and wondered if what I was looking at was the seldom seen Smurf. Really, really, remembering that these sentient Lilliputians could speak, I was about to address it, but I realized at a second glance that this was an infant of the species, a baby Smurf. What my daughter wouldn't give to be here right now. She actually made me take the photos of baby Smurfs from last year's National Geographic and blow them up to poster size for her room. She even had the official life-size, which isn't very big at all, baby Smurf soft vinyl doll. The proceeds of its pur purchase going to the preservation of the Smurfs' natural ha uh, habitat worldwide. The baby Smurf before me wasn't in good shape, however. The noise I had heard had been its hoarse crying and sobbing. Looking up at me, the creature was visibly terrified. The diminutive blue being's body had been... had been tightly wrapped, I'm thinking about those beans, in rough sisal twine from chin to toe. The wee little infant strained futilely, futilely against its bonds, rocking back and forth between the sobs. Mm-hmm. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, I started to... Uh, we were just skipping this one. The, I started to unwrap the twine, and when I finished, the poor little creature was naked, except for its little hat. I had guessed right about the baby Smurfs... <sighs> what, 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 what's this word? What, what is this word? What word is blarred out here? What, what uh... What is going on here, guys? What do you think's going on here? What what did he guess right about the baby Smurf? The tight, rough Cecil twine. Probably pronouncing that one. Uh, Cecil? Cecil? Seesaw twine had, engaged, had gouged into the Smurf's tender blue skin, leaving its impression deep into the flesh. The creature also exhibited signs of abuse. 
Minuscule bruises everywhere, including on the unusual round little tail. I gave the tail a curious gentle squeeze as the little blue biped squirmed in my gasp. T telltale puncture mark of a syringe. The smugglers didn't seem to have considered this baby smurf of any value when they had fled, which explained the rough treatment and the general disregard for its we welfare. Well, okay. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think of this? This is just a cute, fun little Smurf story, right? You guys think this is cute, right? What's with all the abuse? Hmm. This article is an SCP. It makes you want to kill yourself. Why do they always have to be naked? Why are they always babies? Because it's cute, don't you understand? It's cute. Lovely community. Smurf guy has a YouTube channel? Is that indeed so? What is the YouTube channel? <laughs> Can we go back to the fur baby who married Twilight Sparkle? I need something wholesome. Uh, I know how you feel. This is the most disturbing thing I've ever seen on this channel. It's so cute, I want to drink bleach. You sound like you're dying. Nah, bro, I'm good. I'm fine. Everything's fine here. Let me check the super chats here. Um, and $2 from Tamara Jerusik. Uh, why did you have to call us out, Poppy? This was from like 10 minutes ago, and I don't know what it's about, but... Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I, I didn't mean to call you out. Uh, you're, you're all lovely people. Um, <laughs> trust me, I'm reading. A, I'm currently reading some kind of fucked up Smurf story, so y'all are fine. Uh, <laughs> everybody in the chat is a fine human being. You're all wonderful. Um, so we're 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 babysitting Dewdrop. Uh, um, the minute creatures were initially bewildered by the way their tiny hands and knees would sink slightly into the cornmeal whenever they attempted to crawl about. Uh, right. Baby Smurfs begin to cry. Diaper, a dewdrop needed a diaper change and probably a bath as well. Here we go. Now we get into the real bad shit. I plugged do I plucked Dewdrop out of the playpen and peeling off her lavender pajamas, discovered the offending diaper. I unfastened the safety pin as she twisted in my grasp. Only when I'd removed the soiled bit of cloth from her did she cease her sniveling. Uh right. I carried Dewdrop with me into the bathroom. Vegan soap? Oh, fucking hell. Hypoallergenic vegan soap is the most disgusting thing I've read so far. When it came time to wash little dewdrops face, the poor thing started bawling and squirming hysterically when I inadvertently got soap in her eyes. There simply wasn't anything such as a no-tears formula when it came to baby smurfs. So sensitive were their little eyes. Mmm. Yeah. But it's cute though, everybody. We got two versions of this one. Two versions. Baby Drew Do Do Drop Smurf gets her bath. Such an adorable chapter. Isn't it just so adorable? Can we Okay. Um I just wonder what kind of um you know, this was 2008, this was before, this was before it was public knowledge that this kind of weirdo existed on the internet, so maybe they actually did just think this was cute. I don't know. I, I don't know. Uh, right. Blueberry pie. So, the Smurf is in a pie. Lovely and delicious creamy blueberry. Great. So funny and cute, everybody. So funny and cute. What sweet new chapters. Poor little dewdrop all tied up. But why? I'm asking you a question, why? 
Why, why is this in your story about Smurfs? Why is that in your story? Why are none of you, why are none of, why are none of you questioning why there's like fucking abuse in a story about Smurfs? And here's Mario. Uh, okay, all right. There's Mario, everybody. He's there. M Mario, ha Mario has logged in. It's time to take a piss, everyone. Peekaboo, we see you again. It's a blueberry pie. Surprise. A soft and squishy blueberry. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, no. So cute, guys. Isn't it just so cute? I knew there was such a thing as a blueberry fetish, but I didn't know it was this. Uh, so one rainy afternoon as I watched Blueberry sitting and babbling unintelligibly on the living room floor, I decided to check his diaper before getting ready to wash a load of laundry. My lady friend had just returned the wee baby smurf after taking her turn to babysit him while I ran some out-of-town errands. Upon touching the diaper to feel for wetness, I took the liberty of giving his tail a customary squeeze as well, but once simply wasn't enough this time. I exclaimed, Pardon me, Blueberry, but the way you look sitting there right now and prattling in your little Smurf baby talk is just too... irresistible. What do you guys think of that one? Think this is just fun, cute, uh, cute, happy, fun Smurf story? We we still cute now? Mm-hmm. Blueberry stared over his shoulder at me in bewilderment as I commenced to repeatedly mash down on his plump little blue tail and diapered rump, pinning it to the floor and driving my and driving tiny squeaks from the creature as if he were some pet's rubber squeeze toy. The little, did, when you say pinning it to the floor, that's, the little creature's blue tail flattened like a pancake under the pressure of my index finger. But as soon as I released it, the resilient appendage and equally soft and pliable rear end would spring right back into their original shape. You're ten times better than a whole package of Charmin bathroom tissue, I proclaimed in con conclusion. At that moment, I half expected Mr. Whipple to walk into the room to say, don't squeeze the baby Smurf in admonishment. I don't know who Mr. Whipple is, but I'm at this point half expecting the fucking FBI and RCMP and the fucking National Guard to break into your goddamn house. Blueberry blinked up at me with a rather, rather puzzled look on his face, making me laugh. Ha ha ha. It's just so cute. It's just so cute how this this large grown adult individual is treating these tiny creatures like they're his fucking inanimate plaything objects. That's just so cute. Just so cute. You managed to give your blueberry a delightful softness, Smurf in hand. Uh Mhm. Mm I think that the little baby Smurf's tiny bodies are irresistibly squishable, and I've probably written in every single chapter of my story somewhere trying to demonstrate that, particularly with those unique, soft little tails of theirs. What is this now? What is this now? Screech of a smoke detector. Tried to ascertain the origin of the fire, but it was soon apparent that there was none. The low battery warning has triggered the alarm. After shutting off the smoke detector, I found Blueberry rolled into a little blue ball on the floor, gripping his pajama-clad feet tightly with his tight face, or tiny face, rather, buried between his legs and trembling. I could see his little round blue tail poking through the seat of his PJs. Tries to unroll him. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like you're. I, f I feel like the name Smurf in hand 
and the way the way so much of this has to do with him like using his hand to physically manipulate the smurf is uh, weird it's it's specifically weird like it's more weird that it's all it all seems to come back to the hand and poking the smurf and touching it and rubbing the tail and unrolling the smurf and moving its hands away from its feet and like manipulating it can you imagine if you were a, if you were a smurf having some fucking weird sweaty fat son of a bitch like moving your limbs around and trying to fight this is a nightmare this is a nightmare this fucking smurf is living in terror perplexed i watched the baby smurf in the throes of debilitating fear yeah maybe because it's being abused by its fucking psycho owner every time i tried to touch him he'd flinch and cry out yeah gee hmm I wonder why. That almost sounds like some kind of a reaction. Oh, boy. Uh, the human world, no matter how much I tried to make accommodations, was at times too... I can't believe I'm getting, like, like offended on behalf of a fucking Smurf. You know why it is? Because it's pro it doesn't end at Smurfs, and you and I both know that, chat. You and I all know that it doesn't just stop at Smurfs. Poor little thing hiding behind his little hat. So all of these people, all of these other people in this thread are just cool with this. And they think that this is just fine. None of them seem to, they're all, in fact, they're on board. They are so on board. So the real question is how bad does it get, you know? Like how, how bad could it possibly get? Cause they're not throwing up any issues with all the abuse. They're not throwing up any issues with any of that shit. No, but it's, but it's all fine. Uh, so. This again, all fine. Ador adorable little trembling smurfling. Yeah, that's adorable. Squeaky smurf in part two of this chapter. Tattle Rhett will actually meet, talk to, and handle Dewdrop and Blueberry. This gives me more time to study how to draw Raven's character. Blah, blah, blah. Tattle Rhett means Dewdrop and meets Dewdrop and Blueberry. Uh, w wicker baby carrier, carrier, the speaker was a smurfette. Uh, that's what an adult smurf looks like. The petite creature. Uh, we don't want anything to do with an adult smurf. No, that's, that's not our shit. Uh, signaling the stork. This is just a bunch of shit. This is just so much shit. This isn't even, this is, this is the kind of chapter. This is the beach episode chapter where it's like, this isn't even disturbing, but it's, it's so in depth and fucking weird that it, that it doesn't, it's not, it's not better. It is not better. This is not, none of this is, is all that weird except for the smugglers and poachers and stuff. Poaching Smurfs. Um, no, none, none of that is, is, is particularly even that strange. It's, it's, it's the, it's the detail that we're putting into all of this that is, that's really fucking me up right now, you know? Oh my god. Uh, Tattle Rat, and yeah, we got this fucking. Ugh. Smurf. Smurfs Matters Understanding and Relations Foundation. Uh, it, this invites us to ref reflection. Peoples, peoples in the whole world can hardly understand each other. Just imagine towards cute little Smurfs. Hence the need of a better acknowledgement among all, either being Smurfs or humans. What the fuck are you saying? Uh, chapter two, Dewdrop and Blueberry. Right. Uh, as you've seen, many humans in my series have no sensitivity toward the well-being of Smurfs, and some are outright cruel to the tiny blue beings. The politicians are there for their own gain, of course. Why are we talking about politicians? With Smurfs being so vulnerable and with no officially denied r defined rights, it's no wonder. Tattle Rhett has armed guards. What the fuck is happening? You should definitely adopt a baby Smurf. Winky Smurf face. I, I don't like this. I don't like this, this whole thing about, oh yeah, some of them are just cruel, but I just manipulate it for my own, for my own loving needs. I'm good. I'm not cruel. 
I'm not doing anything cruel to a living creature. Nah. This, this is a great mindset to have. Yeah. I've never seen this one before in any other group of of people who break the law with their fetish. Uh, right. So, Tattle Rat, Blueberry. I, I'm not seeing as much. I'm seeing a soft tummy, uh, tummy and Smurfette's arms and sleeping sock and... F uh, yeah, okay. Like, it, it changes. It goes from being really fucked up to being less fucked up, but it's the detail, you know? It's like... I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna skim through some of this. I'm gonna try to get to the... Uh, the uh, I don't know, good shit? I, I don't know. Um, but here we go, everybody. We've got another little, little Smurf. Oh, yeah. She loves to cuddle and have her tiny blue Smurf tail played with. Don't you just love that blue Smurf tail, everybody? This individual seems to be really fixed on the blue Smurf tail. Mm-hmm. And it's a pity that Strawberry is, in spite of being well-treated, seen as if she was just a pet, when in fact she's simply a baby of, an, of another species. This person's really standing up for the Smurf rights. Uh, right, Strawberry's pick. Turned out that Strawberry was still available, so she went home to the nursery. Uh, the tiny blue creature had been trained... Oh my god, what is this? Sedated by an injection in her tail, the baby Smurf lay on a heap of shredded newspaper in a cage for rodents. The tiny blue creature had been trained to drink from the water dispenser meant for hamsters and to eat dried Smurfberry food pellets from a tray, which was attached to the cage wall. Scattered about were just a few toys, a plastic ball, and some alphabet, uh, alphabet blocks included. The staff at the exotic pet agency said that they usually didn't uh, dress Strawberry except for her Smurf hat. Right. Crawling around naked. Uh-huh. After all too short a time, I had to pry Blueberries and Strawberry's tiny blue hands off of each other's teensy Smurf tails as they sat side by side looking up at me with dismay. So, Blueberry and Strawberry were, like, fucking, and this guy comes along and cock blocks them. Um, right. In addition to merry squeaks and giggles. Uh. Uh-oh, what is this? Blueberry is blissfully purring slash gurgling away as his sensitive little baby Smurf's tail is scratched for the first time by a grown Smurf. Dewdrop wants her. Oh, she's shaking that ass, waiting for her her tail to get scratched too. But yeah, you know, just a fun, just a fun, cute little story. They're just so cute, everybody. They just can't stop being so cute. Every fucking response uses the word cute. This is. If these people are not all child rapists, I'm going to be amazed. Um, all right, so... Baby Smurf into the story. Uh, pom Pom? The first Smurf with a disfigurement that the Blue Moon Nursery had ever acquired. <sighs> you really mean to tell me this is not a fetish? You, you want me to believe that? Okay. The next road, the road next to the lad's father's farm was a, uh, perf a favorite place for humans to dump their unwanted pets. Uh, a rat attacking another rodent. The lad raised his air rifle for a shot. Um, the rat scurried into the field and out of night, out of sight. The other thing had no fur and its skin was blue. Against his better judgment, he picked it up to examine it more closely. The terrified little being... They're always scared. You have to remember that. These Smurfs are always terrified. That's part of it. That's what gets them going. That's what, that's what really gets it off. That's what really ma makes the, the little Smurf become the big Smurf, if you know what I mean. <laughs> 
He, they need to be terrified. That's the only way it can work for him. Uh, Wide-eyed in terror, watching the news about a raid in the area on exotic animal smugglers, he remembered the discovery of a baby smurf and what it looked like. So that was what this thing must also be, he thought, turning the petrified creature to look at it from all sides. Uh, it, was a, it was a male of the species. It was completely naked. Even its smurf hat was missing. And that its fleshy blue tail had been completely chewed off by the rat. So we've got a smurf being eaten by a rat. Baby smurf, no less. That's cool, though. That's fine. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. A lot of stuff about this baby tail stuff. Okay. So they feel really bad about not having a... Not let him not having a tail. Got Smurf crying here. Because no tail. I want my whittle tail back. Mm-hmm. I considered Pom Pom's misfortune. I, I like this line. This line... It's like he's sitting on a throne in like the Baphomet pose. I considered your misfortune. I thought about what to do with it. At first I wondered if my own little baby blueberry smurf could heal him like he had miraculously mended Dewdrop's troubled heart. Right. Even in the world of miracles, it appeared amputees received short shrift. So we're able to have living baby smurfs for these people to fucking rape or whatever they're doing, but I can't get my arm back. That's cool. A uh, few phone calls, prosthetic tail. Make sure to get him a, a claw hand. That's, that, that's, uh, I hear that's all the rage. Pom pom. Right, so he's got a fake tail. Okay. Wonderful. He's got a fake tail. I, uh, I don't know. I, I just don't know. I, I just don't know. I'm expecting it to get a lot worse. Because we're only about halfway through now. But I've heard some shit. Adult smurf, sanitary reasons. You can't smurf this to us again. Uh... No, not the baby, please! The runty blue infant yelped in pain as she was grip gripped tightly by one of her soft round ears and wrenched from the arms of her protector. The tiny thing was then repeatedly dunked into and swished around the bucket of soapy water, screeching and spluttering each time her little head broke the water's surface. When the little smurfling was lifted out for the last time, it was affixed to an overhead piece of twine by a clothespin clamped onto her tender pea of a tail. The adult Smurfs was grabbed next, squirming as he was subjected to the same routine, except that a piece of string was used to bind his wrists behind him, and that he was hung by his bulbous, fleshy nose. Uh, I couldn't even imagine how painful it must be for the Smurfs' big, tender nose to be so tightly clenched. Clenched? It's supposed to say clenched, but I think I invented a new word. Clenched by that clothespin. The adult male's Smurf's tears flowed freely as he sobbed in abject misery. Uh, the wee little baby Smurf's hysterical squeals tore at my heart. Right, I'm sure they did. The man pulled the trigger on the hose's spray head and aiming it drenched the miserable little blue creatures with ice-cold water. This is... This is fucking... This is... They're waterboarding Smurfs. I... Uh, got your art there. You guys like this? You like what, we, what we're seeing here? I gotta make sure to save these pictures because I'm probably gonna need them for a, a thumbnail eventually, Tristan. Just, just, just giving you a heads up. I'm pretty sure we're gonna see a full video about this at some point. From cage to cradle. Right. Lovingly made pink outfit. Bow. New pet. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. It's like a real baby, only pocket-sized. I know, that's what makes this so terrifying. If they're real babies, why is this happening? Why is this happening if they're real babies? Oh, those poor little Smurfs. A cute pick of blueberry and the tiny infant Smurfling, though. That's so cruel to have them clothes pinned like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't understand this. We've got these people like this guy here who's like, that was very cruel to treat those Smurfs like that. But then he's not blaming this fucking weirdo for making this story. He's blaming the hypothetical fictional people in the story that this guy has control over. And he's the only person put it, subjecting these Smurfs to torture right now. This guy. Not the people in his story. They are, they are completely subject to his power. Um, brutal employees from the municipal shelter. Uh, uh, so we've got fan art here. Smurf in hand, your last chapter inspired me to draw this pic. Okay. Well, oh. watch out, motherfuckers. They mean business. Um, so many of these posts are thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Squeaky Smurf. Thanks, Vic. Hey, I really like this image, Bob. Can I save this? I really enjoy- I, I really like this image. I, I, I would like to save this for my own use. Um, right, so Vega... During the following several weeks, our newly rescued baby Smurf Runt had become the darling of the nursery. Bottle, okay. The baby's tail is very tender and much, must never be pinched or treated roughly. Mm, here we go. Mm-hmm. Very tender flesh. Thanks for telling us. The tiny smurflings run this tiny smurfling runt's blue flesh was by far the most tender. Now I'm not sure if this is a quote from this guy or from Albert Fish, but I uh, don't like what I'm reading. Suppressed giggles, play pen. Uh so there's a car there's a, the little Smurf is like almost dead. What the fuck? What the fuck? What what the fuck happened? On this particular okay, we need to read we need to read through this. On this particular afternoon, the little ones were playing a popular game of hide and seek. With a playful squeal, the runt drove dove into a pile. Uh, of the nursery's wor workers' uniforms scheduled for the washer, which I just set down for a minute. The runt hid quietly, quietly in the heap without my realization. I gathered them up into my arms and I carried them to the laundry room. I set the pile next to me in front of the dryer while I emptied the washer of its recent load, the Smurf's diapers. Somehow, the little, the curious little creature had climbed into the dryer from the mound of clothes sitting before it. Without looking, I tossed in a sizable armload of the Smurf's recently washed little diapers. Each baby Smurf required an unbelievable amount of diaper changes per day if it was meant if it was to be kept clean, dry, and happy. Neither was the noxious odor of a baby Smurf's soiled diaper for the faint of heart. Only a truly loving person could shoulder the burden and properly care for the fussy, vulnerable little creatures. You're a wonderful, loving person. Our constant toil to keep the baby Smurfs healthy and happy was only possible because of our love for the little creatures. To the devoted staff and volunteers of the Blue Moon Nursery, blah, 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 blah. I shut the dryer door. I'm so great. I'm such a lovely, loving person. We had a motto. We're so great. I put the fucking Smurf in the dryer. 
I shut the dryer door and setting it to maximum heat, press the start button. The diapers would stay toasty warm when dry. Ah, oh, the baby Smurfs love the feel of a fresh toasty diaper. Returning to the playroom, I got down on my hands and knees, searching every nook and cranny for my diminutive playmates. I was an- uh, right, so where are they? I was answered by one or two tiny suppressed giggles. Every time I found a little blue body crouched behind a stack of alphabet blocks or under a cradle, the wee one squeal squealed as I exclaimed gotcha and tickled their noses, ears, and of course, their tails, because that's what this sick motherfucker's into. Syst systematically locating the hiding baby Smurfs, I plucked them up one by one and set them down in the playpen. Some of the little creatures actually believed themselves sufficiently concealed because they had merely hid their eyes with their wee hands. Their endearing naivete made me chuckle. I would found all but one of them, the latest addition to our little family, the female runt. I wondered why I hadn't yet found her. Was there some place I'd overlooked? Whereabouts had I seen the last seen the dear mischievous pipsqueak? My blood froze with apprehension when I finally became conscious of a previously unheated thumping sound emanating from the dryer in the adjacent washroom. Diapers did not go thump in the dryer. Later on, we'd play back a recording from the baby monitor in that room during the accident's investigation. Just audible above the room, the rumble of the clothes dryer's rotating drum, we heard the runt's frantic screams from within. Before the air had eventually become too stifling hot to breathe, that is. Each panicked, tortured cry was abruptly cut short by a dull thump. The wind must have been knocked from the screaming little creature's lungs each time she banged into the dryer's hard, scorching interior. In a near panic, I sifted through the hot but still damp little diapers and found the little runt lying motionless with eyes closed in the pile. Her cute little pink smurf hat had been knocked off of her head. Fearing the worst, I yelled for help. I was holding the baby Smurf in my hand, and when I'd yelled, the infant stirred and a quiet whisper escaped her lips. Then with a ragged gasp, she went limp. At that point, I didn't know whether the baby creature was alive or dead. A couple nurses and my lady friend burst into the washroom. The nurses told me to follow quickly, and we all marched along the playroom past the startled baby Smurfs. Right, okay. Explained what had happened. When they had snipped away the runt's clothing, I drew- Can we stop calling this thing a runt? That just sounds very rude. I don't know. It's like one letter off from, from something else. Uh, I drew in my breath at the awful sight of its bruised and reddened skin. It looked like it had been scalded from head to toe and swatted around by a couple of ferocious alley cats. Along with most of the Smurfling's body, its tender round ears, plump little bottom, and even its sensitive tail bore painful looking contusions and redness. Of course, we can't go without mentioning the tail. Right, uh, of course. As the nurses slowly turned the tiny creature back onto its back, I saw that the runt's bulbous nose, soft cheeks, tummy, and toes hadn't been spared. She also had a black eye. Perhaps worst of all to see was this delicate skin of her underarms that we so loved to tickle had been most dreadfully singed and bruised. So... The fucking Smurf is dead. Here's some here's some lovely fan art for you. Check the chat here. Jokes aside, the author has probably hurt kids in real life. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, not making any accusations here, but boy, would that not surprise me. Uh, hope the little tiny Smurfling will be all right. Really good chapter. She looks like she took a bit of a bruising in that last pick. It must be very scary for a Smurfling to be put in a dryer. I hope this baby Smurf will be all right. Very good chapter. Very good. This is what they all wanted. 
Wow, good chapter. Yeah, isn't it so, isn't it just so cute, guys? Aren't you just, isn't this just a cuteness overload? Such a moving chapter, Smurf in hand. Uh-huh. Right, sounds great. Oh my. Oh my, so do I. I hope the little tyke pulls through, yeah, mm-hmm. Page six of, uh, of nine. We're closer to done than we are to, to starting, so there's that. I haven't even looked at the rest of this fucking forum yet. I don't even know if I should. It's getting to the time when I want to go and like buy food. So, <laughs> um, poor little Smurfling. The runt had survived. Right, no broken bones. Here's some nice art, everybody. This is fine. This is just fine. This definitely doesn't raise any questions about anything. No, this is just fine. Why is there a dismembered... Okay, it's like a doll. Okay. Um, right. Unbeknownst to Blueberry, I often removed his Smurf hat during his nap time in order to kiss him. That is assault! Blueberry and I went home. The runt. I like how he's capitalizing runt. That's just the name now. Yeah, you're the runt. I hope you like it, you fucking little, little runt. That, that, is, that is such a nice name. Yay, she lives. Never underestimate the little ones. Yeah, you would know, wouldn't you? You would probably know how far you can push a little one. Anyways, uh, poor little thing. Can't even imagine. Oh, I'm just so happy. I'm just so happy. Everybody's just so happy that... What the fuck? Yeah. Here he is, everybody. Here's me. It's what the fuck. You, you people are crazy. That story about the Smurfling has obvious and highly disturbing sexual overtones. I fear for your sanity, all of you. But in the meantime, here's a picture, which is somehow infinitely less disturbing than anything we've seen so far. What the fuck? Everyone here has a right to post their creative efforts. This is Smurf in Hand's universe fanfic, and his art is rather cute in my opinion. Keep in mind, this is a moderator, everybody. You don't want to cross him. He's the big dog, okay? Your image has nothing to do with this story, and your comment is very inappropriate. Therefore, my advice to you is if you can't say anything positive, or at least have a constructive advised criticism, then don't say anything at all. Yeah. You need to have a better criticism than this is fucking weird and you're, why, why, why are you doing this? I personally enjoy the pics. I'm glad the bruised up baby Smurf. All right. Hello, troll. No, this person's just a troll. This is just definitely just a troll. This person is the one who's crazy. That's right. What a, biz to the troll. What a bizarre interpretation of my work. Yeah, how would anybody reach those conclusions, you know? How would anybody get to that conclusion? You'd best cease fretting over our sanity and start worrying about your own. For your own sake and for that of society at large, please seek psychiatric treatment for yourself. Post haste. To any moderator, while I realize that my creating the story here is a privilege and not a, a, a right. Blah, blah, blah. My goodness, sexual overtones, you say? Oh, please, miss, Mr. Mrs. What the fuck? Give us a break. There's an old Brazilian expression. Procurar chifre em cabe cabeça de cavallo, I guess. Cavallo. To look for horns on a horse's head, which fits you perfectly, because that was just what you've done. So basically what this BR is trying to tell this person is, you know, no, you're the fucked up one. You're the fucked up one for looking at all these bruised and like battered fucking pictures of Smurfs being abused and hung up by their fucking noses and tails and being assaulted and like manhandled and being scorched to fucking near death in a dryer 
in vivid graphic detail. No, 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 no. It's your fault. You're the weird one for thinking that there's anything strange there. You're the one. You're just looking for horns on a horse's head, as they say. Okay. 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 We're nearly done. We are nearly done. This one's got some baby Smurfs, everybody. Mm -hmm. Merry Christmas and Happy Hanukkah, everyone. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. What the fuck is this? So this person quotes the, the, the sensible man and says, How are you discriminating the Smurfs? How dare you be mean? Hang on. Hold, hold the fort. Hold the fort. This will just take a second. This this will just this will just be real quick. I promise. Uh, I, I promise. Is this the one I want? Oh, oh fucking hell! You know what? This works fine. Fine. You are discriminating the Smurfs. How dare you be mean to Smurf in Hand's story? You made us very sad, mad, and disappointed. To Smurf in Hand, I'm sorry I didn't start reading your story before. I just started to read, and today I passed about one page or less out of the whole topic. The story is turning out awesome, and I've got more to read. So I'll read this at some points, approximately one or two days, to figure out so I can look forward to the most recent parts. P.S. That troll posted that extremely disturbing picture! was being very mean. I'm sorry that I didn't go through this because, bef before because I never started reading this back then. You did the right thing. Overall, I'm proud of your hard work. You are talented. And I kind of feel guilty for not reading this earlier. While you, what the fuck? Get out of here! We don't allow violence! Keep up the good work, smart man. We don't allow violence. We definitely don't allow violence. That would be bad. Love your story, though. Love the story about the uh, abused, beaten, fucking nearly dead Smurfs. Yeah, that's fine. That is just fine. That is just fine. Here's page seven. Um, and we've got more. Oh my god, the babies are in danger again, everybody. The babies are in danger again, everybody. You know what? On that note, uh, I'm gonna I'm just gonna check the super chats real quick and then just take a look at the chat too. Um $1.99 from green thumbs to my elbows. The Smurf cringe is going to throw my back out. <laughs> uh, Elijah Guest with $1.99. Hey, you you hear that Pamper Chew's channel was deleted. Yeah, uh, he, he made a video saying why I like kids. Um, and then his channel got deleted. So, you know, uh, <laughs> I don't I don't know. I, the question is, I, I think somebody got the audio from the video, I think. I, I don't know how they did it, but uh, they got the audio from it, and apparently it, he, he, I'm not sure. I, I haven't looked into it too much, but from what I've heard, he, uh, it's, it's, my initial theory was it was going to be why I like kids, as in why I wear diapers and think kids are cool and why I identify with kids, you know, that kind of thing. But no, uh, I, from what I've heard, I'm pretty sure he uh, he likes kids, and that's why his ch his channel is now gone. So, uh, rest in peace, Pamper Chew. Uh, did you know he's apparently a fucking meth addict? That's what I've heard. I mean, his channel's gone, so it's technically not bullying another creator. Yeah, apparently he's a meth addict. Multiple sources have told me this. Um, apparently the daddy, the fucking the the guy in the park with the orange hat, the daddy. Yeah, he got him into the he got him into meth. So that's cool. Uh, and another two dollars from uh, thank you, Elijah. And another two dollars from Tamara Jerusik. Uh, we're in the darkest timeline. Well, you know, this is from again. This is from two thousand eight. So I mean, this is this is from like before. Like like I said, this is from before when it became very much public knowledge that there's a lot of fucking weird people who do shit like this. 
You know what I mean? Like, like DeviantArt was a thing, but it wasn't... 2008 was not the era of DeviantArt cringe compilations, you, you know? And, like, <laughs> be, be, people making fun of DeviantArt and stuff like this would have been exclusively dedicated to... Or rather reserved to, like, one or two sites, you know? Like a, like a forum somewhere. Anyways, so... Right. When I prepared to leave for home, blah, blah, blah... Everything's great. All tuckered out after a busy day. Uh, I would have had another wonderful day, or so I had thought. It was early morning after the one and only night that our security guard couldn't make it due to mysterious car troubles. Blueberry had fallen asleep in my coat pocket during the hour-long drive. I pulled into my parking place and pushed the intercom button outside the front door to identify myself and be buzzed inside. Blah, 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 still no answer, and now I was worried. Without the guard, the nurse had spent the night alone in the nursery with the baby Smurf. Since I was only a volunteer, even though a very trusted one, I still couldn't be issued a key. I thought about calling one of the other nurses, or my lady friend, who lived... The way he keeps saying my lady friend, I don't know. I, maybe I'm alone in this, but for me, it's the weird repeated speech that the, this kind of thing always... Whenever I see something that's fucked up and weird on the internet, the most disturbing thing about it is the f fucked up, weird, like, speech patterns. My lady friend. Never my girlfriend. Never girl that I know. Never Becky. No, my lady friend. Every time, my lady friend. Specifically that wording. It's just a weird little thing, you know? It's very weird. It's, it's just it's those little things that catch me, but, um... Right, so the nursery was broken into, I guess. Eerily silent as we split off to locate the night nurse. I repeatedly called out for the nurse by name. Uh, Get me out of here. The babies are in danger. I unlocked the closet and the night nurse burst out, running down the hall in a frenzy and into the Smurfs' playroom. I followed her closely behind with a growing... Uh, erection. What? Where, where, hang on. With growing alarm, mindful of my adopted baby Smurf still nestled in my pocket, he was now awake and I could feel him shifting about and stretching with a baby Smurf yawn that was a little more than a soft tiny peep. We located all but two of the little baby Smurfs cowering in nooks about the nursery playroom. The poor incontinent runt had wet herself hours ago, of course. Of course. Of course one of them has to be incontinent. You know? Just of course. It's definitely not a fetish thing, though. We promise. Definitely. No, you're the weird one for making it making it sexual in your head. You're the weird one. Um, right. Incontinent runt. That's just our name now, by the way. It's it's fully ca proper proper name. Th that That's great. That's great. Right. Tummy cramps. The wee one's panicked cries. What the fuck happened? <sighs> okay, so now he's trying to feed the runt. The bitter taste of the medicine in the runt's favorite smurf berry pudding could not be entirely unmasked. Oh god, what is this? On the fourth day, the night nurse and myself were called into the police station for a follow-up in the investigation. Since there didn't yet exist any statutes clearly defining a Smurf's sentience or rights, the police had to treat the matter plain, uh, mainly as a case of burglary and animal theft. If ever caught, the perpetrator would get more jail time for simply locking the nurse in the closet than for any atrocities he committed against our beloved Smurflings. Earlier this morning, our cyber specialist located these video clips hosted on a server somewhere outside the country. It had been uh, already accessed several hundred times before he was... Guys, video clips? Before he was able to hack the site and take it down, blah blah blah, the nurse and I sat in silent apprehension. I have to warn you, the subject matter is very disturbing. But we need at least one of you to identify the victims in order to proceed with the investigation. 
The detective opened a file on the computer desktop and the movie snippet filled the screen and, and began to play. I watched the video clip in horror. Nothing could have prepared me for what we were about to witness. So we're going to we're going to about to witness that. Let me just check the chat here. Buckle in, fellas. Here we go again. I'm willing to be disturbed. Mm -hmm. Dead wing, have mercy. Have, have mercy. Well, it's not my fault. There's there's another like two pages of this after this. So this is like torturing children that happen to be blue. The fetish. No, no, it's not a fetish. This is sweet, cute art. You're the one who's got a weird fetish because you're making it weird. Uh, incontinent runt, trademarked for band name. <laughs> we got some people leaving. Electric Boogaloo is gonna go for a bit. I, maybe he can't handle this. Yeah, no, this isn't a fetish at all. He's festering with baby Smurfs. I like that. He's festering with them. Um, just cute, wholesome fun. Lady friend is really a cousin. Yeah, that's probably a nice way of saying <laughs> she's not my girlfriend. She doesn't want anything to do with me. She's my, uh, what's the name? What, what the fuck is, uh, what, 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 what was Chris's gal pal's name? Megan or whatever. The one who was like a real girl and not one of the thousands of trolls who pretended to be a girl. Lady, lady friend equals girl who turned him down. Yes. This is like beat down. Yeah. Repeated speech. Like it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. This is fine. Everybody. It's fine. I don't know what else I'm supposed to say. <laughs> It's fine. Everything, everything's okay here. I promise. Okay, so this is about to get real disturbing, apparently. Apparently, it hasn't been disturbing up to this point, but it's about to happen. There were Pom Pom and Strawberry. Pom Pom's darling little hat with its fluffy blue Pom Pom sewed on was, un was unmistakable. The terrified little blue infants were each hogtied and dangling in midair, crying their little hearts out. Strawberry's adorable little pink PJs with the words Lil Miracle printed on them were torn off and lay on a rough looking workbench below. Occasionally we'd hear a man's coarse laughter between our beloved Smurfling's tortured sobs. Seeing from the video how much the two baby Smurfs diapers sagged told me that they'd been an unpleasantly sodden and soiled for a very long time, perhaps a day or even longer. Poor little Pom Pom flushed miserably as his ersatz tail was ridiculed. The, po the cruel man jabbed at it with his finger. What's with your misshapen tail, you little, b b you deformed little blue freak? He masked, his masked captor sneered in a digitally disguised voice. Oh, digitally, okay. Well, there you go. Mm-hmm. Then the helpless Smurfling's soft, tender, bulbous little blue noses and tails, which they so loved to have caressed at the nursery, were each viciously pinched, jerked, and twisted repeatedly. A Smurf's nose was tender enough, but there was nothing so sensitive as a Smurf's bulbous tail. I blanched at those tied Smurfling's sharp, frenetic screeches of pain. They were like nothing I'd ever heard before, and I would rather have gone permanently deaf than to hear those poor, suffering, tiny blue infant creatures shrill outbursts of unmitigated agony. So I want you all to just picture a situation in which you make art that looks like this. Ripped off baby onesie. M fucking like yanking on the appendages of a baby tied up in a diaper while it screams. Can any of you think of a, a situation in which you would be drawing this art and it wouldn't be for a fetish? Because if you know of a situation like that, I'd be down to I'd be down to hear it. In the next scene, they howled as each were, was taken in turn by their floppy, floppy round Smurf ears, which were also given a series of merciless wrenches and twists. The baby Smurf's soft round ears were roughly twi- You know, I honestly think this is even a little worse because it doesn't get overtly sexual. I am waiting for this to get overtly 
Uh. Okay, it might be about to. Okay, it's about to. Okay, uh, right. I was gonna say, it's almost more fucking creepy because it's not overtly sexual. It's this weird fetish of pulling on their ears and tails and shit and causing them physical pain. If it was a Smurf getting fucked in the ass, that would be it one thing, but... But no, it's like this weird, very specific shit about bruises and swelling. Why anyone would be amused by the cute little baby creature's sufferings was beyond my comprehension. How many pages of this thread is there? Nine? Yeah, can't imagine why. Can't imagine that. Uh, Strawberry was then untied and allowed to fall. The diapered Smurfling's posterior hit the workbench with an audible, wet, and squishy-sounding plop. The diaper was yanked off as the tiny blue infant was pinned face down onto the workbench's nicked and greasy surface. The man's other hand came back into view, brandishing what appeared to be a short section of flexible plastic track for toy cars. As Pom Pom dangled above, he stopped crying and gaped in abject disbelief as Strawberry was slapped repeatedly on the rear with the length of track. The Lilliputian infant's face contorted and went purple as it yelped with each sharp, resounding smack. The shocked, soggy, and sobbing pom-pom was untied and dealt with next. Their tender little blue bottoms covered in reddish welts. Very nice, wholesome art. Wholesome ass art right there. Mm-hmm. They're dunking pom-pom into a... head first into a pail of water. Could see his legs kicking frantically in the air as his bruised and swollen Murf, Smurf's tail pan, uh, panicked, quivering. The diminutive baby creature. It's always gotta, gotta remind everybody that they're small and diminutive. They are weaker physically than this than this writer. That's the important part. He is physically stronger than them and can manipulate them, and that's the, that's. That's what it is. Uh, powerless in its torturer's grasp and mercilessly immersed for intolerably long periods of time. Upon the brink of drowning, the suffering little infant would be brought up only long enough to have any water squeezed from its aching little lungs and to take a couple desperate gasps of air before being shoved back underwater. Okay, what the fuck is this? Is this just ears? No, he's rubbing hot sauce in their eyes. And I love how this is all being like, this is all being like, it's all being uh, framed as this, this evil torturer, right? Ah, oh, he's just, it's just so evil. This evil torturer doing these things. How could he do that? This is just so evil. I don't know. It's like, it's okay. It's okay if we show all this creepy fucked up shit because it's supposed to be them that's, that's doing it. I think it's weird. I'm not getting off to this. What sort of depraved beast would do something like this to an innocent, lovable little baby Smurf? So we got more Smurfs. Wow, awesome. Can't wait for the next chapter. Doing really great with these illustrations too. Winky Smurf face. Okay, Mr. Ravenchild, Mr. Moderator, you're you're a creepy fucking pedophile rapist. I'm I'm gonna put that out there now. I don't care. You're probably in jail at this point, so it doesn't matter. But yeah. Cr winky Smurf face? This this going on? Winky Smurf face? You're giving me a winky smurf face? Yeah, rotten prison. Okay, your story is getting more and more thrilling. Poor little Smurf babies in the hands of a human monster. Yeah, they sure are. They sure are being controlled by a human monster right now. That's definitely for sure. All right. Uh, impressed by the chapter. Wow, the baby Smurf is so cute. Here's a photo of me and my baby Smurfs, everybody. So cute. You're really talented. Oh, 
boy, what is this? What the fuck is this? What the fuck is this? Sorry, I'm just reading this now. I'm trying to figure out what this is. This is like him recount. Okay, I'm trying to figure out what this is. I, I didn't want to make a comment, but this is like, this is like this guy recounting, recounting what he had just seen. Now they're cutting off the tail. Oh my god. But it's okay though, everybody, because it's just so simply disgusting. It's just so disgusting. That's why I'm gonna write it out in graphic detail and then draw it and then fucking photo manipulate my hand into the picture. It's just so disgusting. I can't believe anybody would get off to such a thing, right? Had Pom Pom remained pinioned betwixt the brutal jaws of that pipe wrench for a few hours more, the poor baby Smurf's arms would become too tired to lift, too gay to lift, and its tightly constricted tiny lungs would surely have given out. Right. This is him recounting what he had seen. So keep in mind, the, the, the conceit of the narrative right now is, well, I had just watched those videos that were so disturbing that I'm definitely not being represented by in any way. I love my baby Smurfs, but I had just watched those really disturbing, sick videos, you guys. And now I just can't stop talking about how disturbing and sick they were, you guys. All the frantic screams and the agonized rasping breath, or breath and the fucking pinioned betwixt the brutal jaws. Look at this. Look at what's happening right now. These little hearts had been broken. Oh yeah, you don't say. Unable to find any fingerprints. Hmm. Okay. Callously kept them in wet, soiled diapers. You got diaper rash. Mm-hmm. Right, okay. Well, I'm kind of skipping over this mostly now. Poor little Snickers, why? Whoever did this should be severely tortured himself. There's your man. Right there, that's him. It's Mr. Kill. All right, uh, thanks to everyone who read this, yeah. Newborn baby Smurf, uh-huh. Tiny miracle, that's great. That's so great. got quite some thunder happening right now. In fact, it's actually getting very dark for six o'clock. Is this, is it the apocalypse? Hang on. Just have to open my window just a sec. Oh shit. Okay. Bad news guys. It seems like God heard me reading this story and now uh, the end of the world is happening, judging by the clouds outside. Uh, so yeah, this is pretty much it, you know, oh God. What the fuck? Oh my god, it just doesn't stop. He fucking finds any excuse to put these fucking things through misery. What is this? During his final death throes? Okay, all right, okay. We're here, everybody. We're, we are here. It is... Page seven, it's not even page nine. We're not even done yet. And here's the dead Smurf. Smurf, yes, Smurf. Here's the dead Smurf, everybody. It finally happened. Just a, a Snickers corpse. The baby Smurf Snickers, or more accurately, Snickers corpse. The skeletal remains, there'd been a single teensy baby smurf tooth amongst the bones dislodged from the skull. Mm-hmm. Right, okay. This is just any excuse for it, any excuse. 
Like, at this point, I think the story's over or something. This is, like, a separate thing. And it's in this category for hate mail. Apparently, this was some hate mail that they got. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Definitely not just this guy being a psycho. No, it's hate mail that this fictional Smurf nursery received. Okay. I think that about does it. I say as I keep scrolling through and expect to see something way worse. <sighs> oh god. Oh god. Oh, the gif version. No, I'm good. <sighs> what a wonderful story so far. What a wonderful story so far. Okay. Well, this is page eight. This is a much shorter page than the last one. There's not that much left. I think the I think the story is kind of over now, as you can see. Uh, mm -hmm. This is from years later, actually. This is from 2012. Yeah, this is years at this is years after the fact. Uh, so, and even, even years later, nobody has commented on how fucked up this is. Smurf in hand, your story was so sweet, so heart- Man, God is really pissed off, and he absolutely should be. Uh, so sweet, so heartfelt, so beautiful. I cried three times. This tale of these Smurfs, will to survive, their care and compassion for each other. It touched me in ways I've never felt before. Yeah, I'm sure you touched yourself, motherfucker. You pony motherfucker. With, with how you started the heartbreaking tale of Little Runt and the male Smurf. I was hooked from the start. Blah, blah, blah. Publish it as a short story. Okay. So... I think the most, by far, the most fucked up thing about this thread. Uh, man. Wow, that wind is picking up. Okay. I'm gonna have to... Okay. <laughs> Batten down the hatches, everybody. Uh, I deserve this. I really deserve this for reading this story. But, um, yeah. I would say the most disturbing thing about this is not the pictures. But the fact that everybody else in this fucking thread, except for one guy, thinks this is not only okay, but really good. They think it's good, they think it's great. They're on the edge of their seat for the next installment. And, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, somehow we found a part of the internet where this is just fine. This is just fine. You know what I mean? Like. Like the 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 go-to thing that you that you think when you see this stuff for these people is not oh my god, but rather nah this is just cute and adorable, and I think that that is by far the most sickening part of the site, uh, hands down. So that was one thread, but one mere thread from the Smurf BBS, the happiest place on earth, the happiest place on Smurf. Um, yeah, I think we're going to be looking at more of this forum eventually, because as I say, it's not this one psycho that's the problem. It's the fact that everybody else on this forum, and by all accounts, the culture of the forum itself, seems to be encouraging this kind of behavior. I, I don't know. I don't know. That seems a little fucking... Uh, okay. Checking the super chats. Checking the, checking the super chats. Checking the... Uh, checking the... Check in the chat, and and I think we'll call it. Uh, I think we'll call it quits. Cecile A, five dollars. Thank you for this bulbous torture. Um, thank you. I, <laughs> you're welcome. It was quite eye-opening. Cancer connoisseur with ten dollars. I was so enthralled by Claw's commentary. I forgot this was a live stream. Yeah, you can expect to see this one as a video sometime down the line. In fact, you can expect to see a couple videos come out of the stream. This one's not going to be archived, uh, once again, because, man, the ice chewing forum, that, there was a video and a half. The fucking Smurf thing, that's going to be like an hour long video. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> stay, oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, stay tuned for that, ladies and gentlemen. Anyways, I'm gonna wind down the stream now. Oh, uh, I'll check the I'll check the chat too. Um,
This makes every fetish look sane. Pretty much. More. I need more torturis. Sorry, Magnus. But... No, but it's adorable, though. It's, it's adorable. BBS, more like BDSM. Free spot in heaven if you kill one of these de degenerates. Now, that's not my suggestion. I certainly would never suggest something like that at 45,000 followers. That would be irresponsible. But if somebody in my chat says such a thing, well, uh, you know, that's your prerogative. Smurf Earth. Flat Smurf, the one true Earth. Yes, yes, Zara, you're right. Smurf. This people are real people. Yes, they. Th this people are. Torture art of cartoon characters. How touching. Yeah. All right. Where's WTF when you need him? Yeah, that's the craziest part. First of all, this was a thread from that I, I found on Kiwi Farms, right? I was just going through, uh, it was the Community Watch sub forum. I was like, what are the weirdest fucking forums that I can find? And I found some really good ones, which we've seen today. And one of them was this. And literally the only post in the thread uh, from anybody saying anything about this being weird came from fucking 10 years before before the Kiwi Farms was a thing in like 2008. Okay, well, they were, they were around before then, but you know what I mean? Like a while before Kiwi Farms would have found the place. So other people found it. For whatever reason, the Kiwi Farms people didn't like spam the fucking thread with, boy, this is, in, this is insane. But uh, yeah, th there's that. There's definitely that. Somebody said this guy's got a YouTube. So I'm going to be really interested. Uh, I'm going to be really interested if... Uh, Claw, can you like go buy something strong to drink? Oh, I've got like half a bottle of Maker's Mark left. I got a date with that. The other day I bought some root beer liqueur because... I'm a, I'm a, I'm a loser, I guess. I don't know, but it's, uh, it's a little too sweet for me. Anyways... Um, yeah, I think that's about gonna do it. If any of you know what this guy's YouTube channel is, please leave me a comment. Or leave me a... Leave me a Twitter DM or something. That person earlier asked me to check my DM, so I'm gonna do that. But, uh, yeah. Just, just... Leave me a... Leave me a, a line. Okay. This is officially happening. <laughs> <laughs> the, it's the end of the world as we know it, and you know what? After the two hours we just spent reading the fucking tortured Smurf story, I feel fine. Thank you for watching, ladies and gentlemen. And if I still have, if I still, if I'm still alive tomorrow, I'll, I'll maybe see you again. All right. And on the, and on the screaming note of those people outside, uh, take it easy. This is, this is the bear. He's, he's watching you all, especially, especially if you're, uh, especially if you think you've got a juggalo forum up and you're actually just showing a picture of a bear in a fireplace for like 20 minutes. Very nice. All right. Bye. Penis. Sm bulbous smurf penis.